Okay, so yes, good evening everyone. Good evening everyone. Good evening bacha logo. Kaise hai sab? How is everyone doing? Okay. So first of all, I would like to start by introducing myself. I am Dr. Shagun Mehta and today we are here to discuss your Daskadam FMGE TND series, right? So I hope aap sab ne apni e-medico section mein ja ke daily quiz section mein questions jo upload hoye the wo attempt kiye honge. There were total of 26 questions and all 26 questions were made on the basis of all the important PYTs and PYQs. Hai na? So, on the basis of that, we tried to make important questions on the basis of that. So that in your revision, you specifically don't miss topics on topics. Right? So, obviously, if we talk about our FMG exam, then first of all, you have to revise your DFX once again. You have to revise your DFX once again. High yielding important topics in it. Number one. Number two. अपन ने दस का दम में important PYTs PYQ से related questions practice कर लिए and what I would like to request is कि आने वाला CBT one and CBT जरूर दीजिएगा क्योंकि उसमें भी वो test इसी हिसाब से design किया गया है so that आने वाले समय में वो important questions और topics को आप याद रख सकें ठीक है जी चलो अब शुरू करते हैं revision and discussion of the paper that you have attempted so, शुरू करें पहला 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 सवाल देखो I want active participation from you all मुझे चैट बॉक्स में सवाल का जवाब चाहिए आप सब से चलो स्टार्ट करते हैं हाँ जी गुड इवनिंग हेलो सबको यस यस सो एवरीबडी इज एक्साइटेड आई एम एक्साइटेड फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन आई वॉन्ट आंसर फ्रॉम एवरीबडी सो वॉट इज द क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन से इज दैट आई हैव अ ट्वेल्व मंथ ओल्ड इन्फेंट Having multiple eczematous rashes, petechias all over the back with recurrent infections. What is the likely diagnosis? Very good. Yes, if I look at the question, I know this is an immunodeficiency disorder. Ji ha. And mujhe kya mil raha hai? Eczema. Number one. Very good. Petechias. Petechias means there must be some platelet problem thrombocytopenia and recurrent infections and I know this is a classical this is a classical triad of yes option B very good bacha log I'm so happy that you guys are answering perfect yes this is my Viscott Eldrick syndrome this is a classical triad of Viscott Eldrick syndrome in which you have eczema you have thrombocytopenia and recurrent infections. So this is the classical triad of Viscott Eldrick syndrome, right? Now, if I have given a question on Viscott Eldrick syndrome, so देखो ये तो अपना परम कर्तव्य है कि इसके बारे में अपने को और भी पता होना चाहिए क्योंकि examiner पूछ सकता है. So we should be having all the knowledge. So if I talk about Viscott Eldrick syndrome, number one, please remember it has an X-linked recessive mode of inheritance. In Viscott Eldrick syndrome, I am going to have mutation in the VAS gene. Because of which my VAS protein is going to be defective. Right? So, VAS gene mutation hoga, jiski wajay se VAS protein jo hai, wo defective ho jayega. Or classical triad ke saath saath, mujhe ek aur baat aapko batani hai, that on peripheral smear of Viscott Eldrink people, I am going to have small platelets. I am going to have chota chota, small platelets, a classical finding of Viscott Eldrink. But if I look at the rest of the options, मुझे बाकी options के बारे में भी जानना है, जो जो मेरे question में है कि उनके बारे में क्या information मुझे पता होनी चाहिए, तो सबसे पहले I'm going to start with the Bruton's A gamma globulinemia. Now please remember कि Bruton's में I am going to have defect in the BTK gene. I am going to have BTK gene defect. 
BTK gene is going to be defective and it has an X-linked recessive mode of inheritance. And please remember, this table is very important because I have written classical MCQ clue history points. The moment you see these words, you are assured that this is my answer. Hoga. Classical clue history points. So for Bruton, what is the classical clue point? That I will have recurrent bacterial and enteroviral infection. Subse important after six months because till six months in bacho ko maternal immunoglobulin immunity provide karti hai. The moment question says infection after six months, only one answer, Bruton's. Right? Next, D. George syndrome. D. George syndrome is because of the 22q deletion it is because of the 22q deletion and what kya classical mcq clue points hai jisko dekhte hi mujhe samajh mein aa jayega ki examiner mujh se d george ke baare mein baat kar raha hai kya likha hoga parathyroid hypoplasia the patient is having parathyroid hypoplasia because of which there is hypocalcemia and tetany like features. There is going to be congenital heart defects. There is going to be cleft palate, palate defects and there is going to be facial defects, dysmorphic facies. This is a classical point. As you can see in the question, you can close your eyes and close your eyes. D. George syndrome. Right? Now, the next one is skid. Skid ke full form, severe combined immunodeficiency. Ye do tarike se mujhe mil sakta hai. Two modes of inheritance. One is going to be your X-linked recessive and second is going to be autosomal recessive. Aur in dono mein se zyada common kaun sa hai? X-linked recessive is more common. Question poochha jata hai ki in mein se out of all the following given interleukin receptor which is not causing skid, right? So, these are all I have given you the name of them. In me se jo nahi dikhega, that is going to be an answer. It is a PYQ of your paper. So, please remember which receptors are going to be defective in skid. Interleukin 2 receptor, 4 receptor, 7, 9, 11, 15 and 21. These receptors are going to be defective. Again, one more PYQ from your examination. Which enzyme is deficient in skid? And the correct answer was this option. ADA, adenosine deaminase deficiency. But yes, ye poochha ja chuka hai. To next time, ko your enzyme bhi poochha ja sakta hai. So apart from ADA, what other enzymes are involved in skid? RAG mutation, JAK3 mutation. RAG mutation, JAK3 mutation. Theek hai? Next. Kya wo classical history hai jise dekhte hi mujhe samaj mein aajai examiner is asking me about skid. Now this bacha, this infant, first thing is the question will mention an infant. Now is infant mein B cell nahi hota, T cell nahi hota, NK cell nahi hota, kuch bhi nahi hota. So this bacha has zero immunity. That's why this bacha will be having all the infections that are present on this earth. Recurrent bacterial, viral, fungal, protozoal. Is dunia ke saare infection is bacche ko hone wale hai. So question will mention infant with oral thrush, diaper rash, failure to thrive. Or in fact we use the terminology for this kid baby. They are called as bubble baby syndrome. They are called as bubble baby syndrome. This bacha has to be kept in a bubble because his dunya ka har infection is bache ko ho sakta hai. So these are the classical MCQ clue history points. The moment you see these words, you know the answer. So yaha pe apan ne jitne important points te wo sare cover kar liye hai. Thik hai? Chalo. Next question. Moving ahead to the next question. I want answers from all of you. Yes, very good, bachas. I'm happy you're answering correctly. Chalo, next question. Genetic anticipation is associated with which of the following genetic diseases? Hanji, bataiye. Pradavilli, Fragile X syndrome, Melas, Turner syndrome. Kya lagta hai? Kya jawab hoga? What do you mean by genetic anticipation? Genetic anticipation means that with each and every with each and every passing generation, with each and every passing generation, severity of the disease is going to be increased. 
जेनेटिक एंटिसिपेशन का मतलब होता है कि हर जनरेशन के बाद सिविरिटी ऑफ द डिजीज इज गोइंग टू बी इंक्रीज एंड दिस इज अ क्लासिकल फीचर ऑफ येस ट्राई न्यूक्लियोटाइड रिपीट डिसऑर्डर फ्रेजाइल एक्स सिंड्रोम वेरी गुड येस द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी राइट बट इफ आई लुक एट द रेस्ट ऑफ द ऑप्शन वट इज प्राडर विल्ली सिंड्रोम प्राडर विल्ली सिंड्रोम इज माई येस इट इज अ जिनोमिक इम्प्रिंटिंग डिसऑर्डर it is a genomic imprinting disorder what happens there is going to be chromosome 15 involvement and what happens in prader willi there is going to be paternal deletion and maternal disomy right इसके अलावा एक और होता है ना अब चलो पढ़ ही रहे हैं तो दूसरा जेनोमिक इम्प्रिंटिंग भी देख लेते हैं इसके अलावा दूसरा और सब और कौन सा होता है जेनोमिक इम्प्रिंटिंग डिसऑर्डर यस द सेकेंड वन इज एंजल मेन सिंड्रोम सेकेंड इज एंजल मेन सिंड्रोम एंजल मेन में भी क्रोमोजोम 15 इन्वॉल्व होता है और ये मेरा तरीका है दिस इज माई वे ऑफ रिमेम्बरेंस ओके दिस इज माई वे ऑफ रिमेम्बरेंस दिस जिनोमिक इम्प्रिंटिंग डिसऑर्डर मैं हमेशा बोलती हूँ कि जो डिलीट होता है ये मेरा तरीका है याद करने का जो डिलीट होता है उसको हम इम्पोर्टेंस देते हैं डिसऑर्डर का नाम देने में मैंने ऐसा क्यों बोला मैंने यहाँ बोला कौन डिलीट हो रहा है पापा डिलीट हो रहे हैं पापा डिलीट हो रहे हैं यानी कि क्या नाम हो गया प्राइडर विली सिंड्रोम यहाँ पे क्या होगा मम्मी मेटर्नल जीन इज गोइंग टू बी डिलीटेड तो मम्मी अगर डिलीट हो रही है तो हम इन्हें इम्पोर्टेंस देंगे नाम देने में और मम्मी हमारी लाइफ में क्या होती हैं हाँ जी एंजल होती हैं सो दैट्स व्हाई मम्मी डिलीट एंजल मैन सिंड्रोम पापा डिलीट प्राडर विली सिंड्रोम ठीक है दिस इज माय वे ऑफ रिमेम्बरेंस एंड मटर्नल डिलीशन होता है और पेटर्नल डायसोमी होता है ठीक है सो ये थे मेरे दोनों जिनोमिक इम्प्रिंटिंग डिसऑर्डर नाउ व्हाट अबाउट मेलास मेलास क्या होता है हाँ जी मेलास की फुल फॉर्म होती है माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल एनकेफिलोपैथी लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस एम ई स्टैंड फॉर माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल एनकेफिलोपैथी एल एज लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस एंड एस इज योर स्ट्रोक लाइक एपिसोड And these are what melas kya hai? Melas is a mitochondrial inheritance disorder. ठीक है? Now what about Turner syndrome? Turner is your monosomy X. So it is 45 XO. क्या क्या important सवाल बन सकते हैं Turner से? Yes, हमें पता है. हम obsgaini में भी पढ़ते हैं. Turner means she is going to have most important question. She this female will have streak ovaries or the rudimentary ovaries because of which she will present to you with primary amenorrhea so 45 xo short stature webbed neck streak ovaries because of this she will present to you with primary amenorrhea right so ye the apne sare ke sare important questions jo ki puche ja sakte hain humne sirf ek sawal nahi kara dost humne teen aur sawal banaye aur aage kya pucha ja sakta hai humne wo bhi cover kar liya theek hai सब कुछ करेंगे कवर यहाँ पे 360 डिग्री कोई लूप होल छोड़ना ही नहीं है बॉस ठीक है नाउ मूविंग अहेड विद द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अगले सवाल पे आते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री अ 35 ईयर ओल्ड स्मोकर प्रेजेंस विद सिवियर रेट्रोस्टर्नल पेन व्हिच इज रेडिएटिंग टू द नेक एंड वर्सन्स आफ्टर हैवी मील्स ओकेजनली इट मेक्स एम वेकअप एट नाइट एज वेल The upper GI endoscopic examination does not reveal any mass, yes, but a velvety patch in the lower esophagus. Biopsy from the lesion is likely to show. If I look at this question, this is classically giving me a history of what? Yes, there is heavy meal ke baad worsening hona, retrosternal pain hona. जीआई स्कोपी पे वेलवेटी पैच लोअर इसोफेगस पे मिलना दिस इज अ क्लासिकल अपर जीआई एंडोस्कोपिक फाइंडिंग ऑफ बैरेट्स हां जी वेरी गुड आप सब बिल्कुल सही जवाब दे रहे हैं दिस इज क्लासिकल अ केस ऑफ बैरेट्स इसोफेगस एंड वी नो दैट इन बैरेट्स इट इज अ बीनाइन कंडीशन इन विच आई ऑलवेज से 
hallmark of barrett's is presence of which cells goblet cells and goblet cells contain what they contain mucin and mucin if i use special stain alcyon blue and pass for mucin they are going to stain positively so this is the information which i already know and if i look 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 at my options number one option is squamous pearls with malignant cells this is a classical this is a classical explanation of yes squamous cell carcinoma this is a classical option a squamous cell carcinoma second second agar hum padhe to kya hai second is malignant looking glands infiltrating the muscle malignant glands infiltrating invading into the muscle this is a classical explanation option b is explaining what adenocarcinoma this is a classical explanation of adenocarcinoma option c benign looking glands aha uh -huh, which are alcyon blue positive aa gayi na apne maze kaam ki baat yes this is my classical presentation of barrett alcyon blue kyun kyunki mucin mucin kyun kyunki goblet cells goblet cells in esophagus hallmark cell case of barrett small round blue cells small cell carcinoma histopathological finding theek hai so isi baat pe apna second question bhi hota hai pura now we move towards okay third question ho gaya ab hum baat karte hain apne agle sawal pe next question question is saying that i have a 2 year old who is having long standing diarrhea and stetoria the child is also short in stature and has not gained weight the peripheral smear and intestinal biopsy was done and has shown in the figure what is the likely diagnosis chalo ji yahan pe humne kya kiya hai humne aapki systemic path ko hematology se connect karne ki koshish ki hai kaise apan ke paas kya hai ek child hai jisko diarrhea hai stetoria hai yani ki i am talking about a mal absorption syndrome here now if i look at the peripheral smear examination what are these cells on peripheral smear these are my irregular spiky membrane cells what are they called they are called as acanthocytes these are actually my acanthocytes when rbc has irregular spikes on its surface these are irregular spiky cell acanthocytes acanthocytes are also called as there is one more name to them they are also called as spur cells yes you guys are absolutely right so on peripheral smear i see acanthocytes and if i look at the histopathological examination aha uh -huh, let's focus 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 what is this ye kya hai khali khale what are these empty empty spaces if you look here all this khali all this khali 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 area that you are seeing this is fat accumulation so all this is fat accumulation in the epithelium so this is fat accumulation in the intestinal epithelium so if i see fat accumulation in the intestinal epithelium i see acanthocytes on the peripheral smear examination so basically i am dealing with which malabsorption syndrome in which you have a mutation in mtp protein the transport of the triglycerides is going to be affected because of which fat gets accumulated in the intestinal epithelium and i'm talking about yes the correct answer is option c a beta lipoproteinemia a beta lipoproteinemia happens because of the mtp mutation what is the full form of mtp microsomal triglyceride transporter protein theek hai microsomal triglyceride transporter protein so this is a classical case of a beta lipoproteinemia but if i look at the rest of the options celiac disease agar examiner mujhse celiac disease mark karwana chahta to wo mujhe kya histology deta in celiac disease i see classical villus atrophy villus atrophy is going to be there villi jo honge wo atrophy ho jayenge apart from that i am going to have crypt hyperplasia i am going to have crypt hyperplasia 
so villus atrophy crypt hyperplasia classical celiac disease presentation if examiner wants me to mark whipple's disease as my answer so for whipple's i would have been shown pass positive macrophages in the lamina propria why pass positive macrophages in lamina propria because in macrophages you will be having tropherima whipplei and what are these cells actually called they are called as foam cells so the pass positive why pass positive because the tropherima whipplei takes up the pass stain and those cells are called as foam cells which you see in lamina propria classical finding of whipple's disease right very important very good absolutely correct next if the question is asking me about lactase deficiency to mujhe kya pata chalega so yaad rakhna in lactase deficiency what happens is ki lactose jo hai wo acche se digest nahi ho pata and the patient presents to you with diarrhea and mal absorption right and please remember lactase deficiency ka jo histology hota hai that is unremarkable usme aapko kuch nahi dikhta the histology is unremarkable okay so this was all about this question and all the important options that you have to remember that what extra questions future questions can be asked okay chalo ji humne cover kar liya hai ye question ko now moving to my next question are straight forward simple question straight forward question ki ek khaas baat hoti hai ya to aata hai ya barbaad karke jata hai hai na तो स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चंस बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होते हैं हमें इन्हें एक्स्ट्रा मार्क्स के लिए पढ़ना है ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ब्रेन ट्यूमर शोज ड्रॉप मेटास्टासिस यस द क्लासिकल सीएनएस ट्यूमर इज ऑप्शन बी मेड्यूलो ब्लास्टोमा एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट व्हाट हैपेंस इन ड्रॉप मेटास्टासिस इज दैट ड्रॉप बाय ड्रॉप द ट्यूमर सेल्स वाया सीएसएफ गोज फ्रॉम ब्रेन to the spinal cord this is a classical finding of medulloblastoma dekho now i know the question was about metastasis but looking at these four options i am very much intrigued because all these four cns tumor options have very classical microscopic finding which can be asked in your future examination because some of them have been asked as a py Q. So I want to take this opportunity कि मैं यहीं पे इन चारों की माइक्रोस्कोपी आपको इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स बता दूं। जैसे कि फर्स्ट एग्जांपल इज ओलिगोडेंड्रोग्लायोमा आई से दिस इज अ इन माय टर्मिनोलॉजी वेन एवर आई टेक माय लेक्चर आई ऑलवेज से ओलिगोडेंड्रोग्लायोमा इज अ वेरी खाता पीता ट्यूमर राइट वाई खाता पीता ट्यूमर बिकॉज इट इज शोइंग नंबर वन फ्राइड एग अपेयरेंस आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट माइक्रोस्कोपी नाउ इंपॉर्टेंट फाइंडिंग्स बिकॉज इट हैज फ्राइड एग अपेयरेंस एंड chicken wire pattern of the capillaries chicken wire appearance of the capillaries around the tumor cells for medulloblastoma very important rosettes homer right rosettes homer right rosette ye kaise rosette hote hain true ya pseudo pseudo rosettes give me an example of true rosettes I'm waiting for the answer in the chat box. Give me an example of true rosette. Again, a PYQ. Next, glioblastoma. Glioblastoma shows very important serpiginous necrosis and pseudo palisading pattern of the tumor cells. PYQ. Next, very important meningioma. Me, yes, we have samoma bodies. Very important. so these are the classical important findings that you have to remember yes very good shakila yes tirath ankit absolutely correct true rosette example is flexner wintersteiner rosette where do you see them retinoblastoma shabash very good next question number 6 again a straight forward question lavender or the purple topped vacutainers are used for so we know the purple or the lavender vacutainers they contain what they contain edta and we use them for ha ah, option c cbc complete blood count yes very good 
But if I look at the rest of the option, for serology, we use either red vials or the yellow vials and they do not have any anticoagulant for serum studies. For coagulation studies, we use citrated blood. That is, for that we use blue, light blue vial, light blue vial having citrate. For glucose estimation, we use grey vial having sodium fluoride, right? So, important ones you have to remember. Anji, thik hai? Chalo. Aage chale. Next. Again, straightforward question. Porcine. Pig, pig, porcine cardiac walls transplanted to humans in which type of graft? Matlab, pig, transmit, uh, pig transplanted to humans. Humne pig se nikala, human mein transplant kiya. So, this is a classical example of, yes, option number C, xenograft. Classical example of xenograft, right? Lekin, baki sare grafts bhi padh lete hain. Sawal poochha gaya hai, kisi aur ke baare mein bhi poochha ja sakta hai. So, I have four types of graft. Number one is allograft. Allograft ka matlab hai, if you give me for grafting, agar main tumse graft loon, matlab, hum log same species hai, we are human beings, but we are genetically non-identical. So, genetically non-identical individuals of same species. Tum mujhe do, main tumko do, graft lenge, allograft hoga. Next is autograft. Autograft means, I use a tissue of my own from one place to the another within the same individual. I am using my own stuff. So, within the same individual, just like for example, you surgery in surgery, split skin grafting. That is an example of autograft. Next, which was asked for xenograft. I take it from a different species. Pig se liya, human ko diya. Porcine cardiac graft is a classical example. Now, isograft. This is very, very important. Isograft is between the genetically identical twins. Aisa nahi, do twins. They have to have the same genetic makeup. So, it is not dizygotic. They have to be, have to be monozygotic identical twins. So, iso tab bolenge if the, the both the twins have the same genetic makeup from monozygote, monozygotic identical twins. Right? Okay. Done. Moving ahead to the next question. Next question is telling you that the following electron microscopic image of a patient presenting with hematuria and edema. The moment I see hematuria, that means I am dealing with a, yes, nephritic syndrome. What is the likely diagnosis? Fata fat se hum electron microscopic image dekhenge. Kya dikh raha apne ko electron microscopic image mein? Yes, I am seeing a characteristic what? I am seeing a characteristic. I always tell this in my lectures. It is like a ox hump. There is a big, big hump. So, this is what? This is a subepithelial. This is subepithelial hump formation. And this is classical finding of which nephritic syndrome? Hanji option B, PSGN, post-streptococcal glomulonephritis. Absolutely correct, you guys are. Okay, now if I am saying that this is a sub-epithelial deposit, but it is a non-uniform, means at one place you have all the deposit resembling a hump, that's why we call them as hump. There is one more glomulonephritis in which you see subepithelial deposits, but they are absolutely uniform. They do not make a hump. Which one I am talking about? Yes, your this option. MGN. Membranous glomulonephritis electron microscopy pe kya dikhega? Is pe bhi mujhe subepithelial deposits hi milenge. Lekin ye subepithelial deposits hump jaise nahi honge. Ye absolutely uniform honge. Right? Minimal chain disease, agar mein se examiner poochna chata, to mujhe microscopy finding mein kya dikhata photo mein? Mujhe dikhata effacement, very important. Effacement of the foot processes of podocytes. Effacement of the foot processes of the podocytes. 
ठीक है ना चलो जी अगर एग्जामिनर मुझे डेंस डिपॉजिट डिजीज दिखाना चाहता तो वो मुझे क्या इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी देता हाँ जी नाम से ही पता चल रहा है नेम इट सेल्फ इज टेलिंग मी इंट्रा मेम्ब्रेनस डेंस डिपॉजिट्स डिपॉजिट्स विद इन दी ग्लोमेरुलर बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन ठीक है तो फिर से वही बात एक सवाल के साथ तीन और सवाल कर लिए हमने 360 डिग्री अप्रोच सो दिस वॉज ऑल रिगार्डिंग द इम्पोर्टेंट इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपिक फाइंडिंग्स दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर हाँ जी ठीक है चलो जी आगे चलते हैं मूविंग आ हेड टू माई नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओके लेट एस लुक एट द क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन क्या कह रहा है क्वेश्चन कह रहा है दैट आई हैव अ 27 सेवन ईयर ओल्ड मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट हैविंग एसोसिएशन विद एन एन जी ओ एंड दिस ग्रेजुएट ट्रेवल्स टू अफ्रीका फॉर अ मेडिकल एड रिलीफ कैम्प वेयर ही कंप्लेन्स ऑफ फीवर नॉज एंड वॉमिटिंग एग्जामिनेशन शोज इक्ट्रस एंड एलिवेटेड लिवर एनजाइम्स A liver biopsy was performed, and histological examination of it showed the peculiar image, peculiar cells in the image. What is such phenomenon called, and what is the pathogenesis of such phenomenon? The moment you get an image-based question, you straight away go and look at the image because half of the question is solved in the image itself. मैं हमेशा बोलती हूँ कि image speaks for itself. वो सब कुछ खुद ही बता देती है कि अपने को क्या focus करना है. so if i look at this image if i look at this image i know this is a liver biopsy now i want to ask all of you can you appreciate that in this particular image i have two types of pink color pinky pinky two types of pink kya bol rahi hu main main bol rahi hu ek to ye pink pink hai ek ye pink pink hai hai na और अगर मैं बोलूं कि ये वाला जो पिंक पिंक है ये थोड़ा ज्यादा डार्क है तो कैन यू अप्रीशिएट दैट यस बिल्कुल क्या है ये हाइपर इोसिनोफिलिक साइटोप्लाजम है और किसका होता है हाइपर इोसिनोफिलिक साइटोप्लाजम हाँ जी एक बॉडी होती है जो कि एक सेल डेथ में बनती है विच बॉडी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट apoptotic body and i am talking about a liver biopsy so basically which liver pathology is going to have apoptotic body acute viral hepatitis and what is the name of that body han ji councilman body sari information is image ne de di ab main dhoondne ki koshish karu dekho mil gaya chamakta hua option b is going to be my correct answer because image is showing you a hyper eosinophilic cytoplasm body it is showing you a hyper eosinophilic cytoplasm wala body and this is basically councilman bodies are seen in patients of acute viral hepatitis seen in patients of acute viral hepatitis ठीक है नाउ अगेन आई जस्ट कांट रेजिस्ट माई सेल्फ टॉकिंग अबाउट इट बिकॉज दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पी वाई क्यू लुक एट द ऑप्शन सी ग्राउंड ग्लास हेपैटोसाइट बिकॉज ऑफ द वायरल इंक्लूजन विच वायरस हेपेटाइटिस वायरल इंक्लूजन अगेन अ पी वाई क्यू वेयर डू यू सी ग्राउंड ग्लास हेपैटोसाइट येस क्रॉनिक हेप बी इन्फेक्शन दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पी वाई क्यू क्रॉनिक हेप बी ग्राउंड ग्लास Now, if I've talked about this, I just cannot let you go without telling you about one another important question that can be asked. That if I say chronic Hep C, so what is the classical MCQ clue point that the moment you see this, you are assured that the answer is going to be chronic Hep C infection. So I'm saying if the question mentions that on histopathology. lymphoid follicle seen so the moment you see lymphoid follicles the answer is chronic hep c the moment you say ground glass hepatocytes the answer is going to be chronic hep b theek hai so important important baatein ho gayi theek hai ab hydropic change kya hai this is my earliest morphological change this is the earliest morphological change of the reversible cell injury chalo This question is over with all the important questions that can be made from this question itself. 
Now moving ahead to my next question. Question says that in a laboratory exercise for medical student an unknown compound is studied. The students are informed that the compound is derived from the endothelium and oh ho classical bath. It is inhibited by aspirin. The student further demonstrate that the compound is okay, a potent vasodilator and platelet anti-aggregant. Most likely, kya hoga? Dekho, pehli cheez to mujhe dekhte hi samajh mein aagai hai, inhibited by aspirin. So, aspirin is a what? Cox inhibitor. So, aspirin is Cox inhibitor. So, ye sunte hi mera option C or option D to kat gaya, kyunki ye dono kya hai? These are LOX derivatives, right? So C and D are gone. Now, I always say this when I study it, that the COX pathway has two derivatives that are the enemy of the other. They are perfect enemies of each other. Why I say enemies? Because both have exactly opposite functions. Which two enemies I am talking about? PGI2 and TXA2. क्या कट्टर दुश्मनी है इनमें नंबर वन पीजीआई टू विल कॉज वेजो डायलेशन एंड टी एक्स ए टू विल कॉज वेजो कॉन्स्ट्रिक्शन एग्जैक्ट ऑपोजिट सेकेंड पीजीआई टू विल इनहिबिट प्लेटलेट एग्रीगेशन वेयर एज टी एक्स ए टू विल एक्टिवेट प्लेटलेट एग्रीगेशन एग्जैक्टली ऑपोजिट तो यानी कि वेजो डायलेटर एंटी एग्रीगेंट प्लेटलेट सो बेसिकली द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग मी अबाउट हैं जी आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी पी जी आई टू यस जानी दुश्मन एक दूसरे से एक्सैक्टली ऑपोजिट बिल्कुल ठीक है सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर पी जी आई टू पी जी आई टू इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज प्रोस्टा साइक्लिन चलो जी ये भी सवाल होता है पूरा अब हम मूव करते हैं दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बिकॉज हेयर आई हैव लिंक योर हिमेटोलॉजी One anemia is linked to leukemia. It is a very important question. Now let us see the question. A 65-year-old presents with easy fatigue, Hanji, cervical lymph adenopathy and moderate splenomegaly. Peripheral blood smear shows Hb 11 gram per deciliter. Oh, ho, ho, ho. TLC, kitta zada hai. TLC, 50. 50,000, oh my God, such high TLC. Kuch to locha hai bhai, kuch to gad bad hai. Okay, with 80% of them are mature lymphocytes. Aha, mature lymphocyte. Okay, it's a lymphocytic leukemia, right? For mature in pathology, we use site. For immature in pathology, we use blast. So, this is a lymphocytic leukemia. Okay, question is so dhanveer question. Sab bata diya mujhe, dekho. CD5, CD20, CD23 positive diagnosis is made because flow cytometry is the investigation of choice of this leukemia. Konsa leukemia hota hai jisme CD5 positive, 23 positive and 20. 20 is a B cell marker. Yes, I am talking about CLL. So question is asking me about CLL. Which of the following morphological change is likely to be, uh, to be seen in the RBC of the patient? So we know that CLL is most commonly associated with Hanji, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And I always say that the moment you see autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the first thing that you have to remember is that it is the most common cause of what? Hmm, spherocytes. Most common causes, spherocytes. So that means my correct answer is going to be option B here. CLL associated with AIHA and this is the most common cause of spherocytes. But if I look at target cells, where do you see target cells? Target cells can be seen in sickle cell anemia. They can be seen in thalassemia. But please remember, they are diagnostic of thalassemia. Yaad rakhna, that target cells are diagnostic of thalassemia. Sonal, don't worry. Yes, we will surely have. Okay? Bilkul ho jayega. Zaroor ho jayega. Tension nahi lene ka hai. Hum yahaan aai hi isse le hai. Hum yahaan hai hi aap logo ke le. Thik hai? Achha. If I look at the rest option, Howell Jolly Bodies. Where do you see Howell Jolly Bodies? Sickle cell anemia patients because of the 
autosplenectomy. So whenever the spleen function is compromised, I can have hovel jolly bodies in sickle cell anemia because of autosplenectomy. If I look at this Heinz body, what is Heinz body? Heinz body means it is seen in what? Where it is seen in G6PD deficiency anemia. G6PD deficiency anemia. So what happens is that in RBC, the hemoglobin, the globin gets denatured. So the denatured globin gets precipitated in the RBC called as Heinz body. There is one more important finding because I have said Heinz body so I cannot miss. There is one more important finding that you see in G6PD patients. Hanji, you see white cells. You also see white cells in G6PD. ठीक है? चलो. आगे चले. Important, important बाते हो गई है पूरी. Next. Question number 12. Question says that I have a 39 year old male presenting with fever and weight loss. ठीक है? Presenting with fever and weight loss. Imaging shows enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes. Biopsy is shown below. The suspicious looking cells were negative. They were negative for CD45 and CD20. And positive for uh -huh, CD15 and CD30. Such a classical IHC given to you. The moment you see CD15 and CD30 positive. One more I want to tell you here. Pax5 also positive. This is classical IHC of classical type of Hodgkin lymphoma. This is classical Hodgkin lymphoma. ठीक है? तो ये देखते ही किस option को मुझे टाटा बाय बाय करना है? Option C. NLPHL नहीं हो सकता because in NLPHL CD15, 30 and Pax5 they are negative. Rather they are NLPHL जो होते हैं they are positive for CD20 and CD45. So NLPHL जो है 20 and 45 positive होते हैं and classical Hodgkin lymphoma is 15, 30 and Pax5. So I know that this is not option C because this is classical one. But an image is given in front of me that is going to solve all the questions going in my mind. I see a RS cell, Reed Sternberg cell and in this Reed Sternberg cell I see an empty space, a lacuna. So that means these are what? These are my lacunar RS cell and lacunar RS cell are seen in which classical type of Hodgkin lymphoma? Hanji. Correct answer is yes. Very good. Absolutely correct. Option number A. Nodular sclerosis type of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. So you have to remember. But if examiner says ulta. Examiner says that CD45 and CD20 positive and 1530 negative and then I get an image of an RS cell and in that case my answer is going to be NLPHL. So in that image, which type of RS cell would have been given to me? Yani ki, I want to ask you that in NLPHL, which RS cell is shown in the A classical popcorn cell. A classical popcorn cell is C. Okay? Let's go. This is my Moving to my next question. Next question says, a patient diagnosed of acute myeloid leukemia now presents with, now presents with epistaxis, multiple echymotic patches, coagulation profile of the patient shows elevated BT, CT, PT, APTT and TT. Aray bapre, sab kuch bada hua hai. सब कुछ BT भी बड़ा है, CT भी बड़ा है, PT, APT, TT, everything is elevated. लेकिन epistaxis, bleeding tendency, so means platelets are low. The patient is having thrombo, AML patient having thrombocytopenia with all other parameters elevated. This is a classical scenario of which disorder? Life threatening DIC. Disseminated intravascular coagulation. Yes, I'm so happy. Absolutely correct. You guys are answering so good. I'm very happy. Bohut, bohut achha lag hai. Solid, very good. 
and we know AML patient most commonly associated with DIC, which AML I am talking about? AML M3. That is called as APML, acute promyelocytic leukemia. And which translocation you see in AML M3? Anji, correct answer is option C, translocation 1570. But if I look at the rest of the translocation, 821. This is M2 AML. This is M2. 922, yes, Philadelphia, CML, chronic myeloid leukemia. What about translocation 1616? Or I can write it as inversion 16, M4 AML. Okay? Chalo ji. This question is also over. Next question. Okay, this is also a nice question with a gross image in front of you. So, the question says that I have a 12-year-old child who died while playing football. Yes, Shakila. Yes, chloroma most commonly associated with M2 AML. Okay, so a 12-year-old died while playing football. Myocardial autopsy is shown below. Most likely etiology is. So, I have an image in front of me and I always tell in the lecture that classical presentation, young child collapses while doing activity like playing or a strenuous activity. This is a classical presentation of Hanji, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is a classical presentation and this gross image is also telling me this. So, if I see this gross image, what is this? In this HCM patient, aapko kya milta hai? you have asymmetrical septal hypertrophy. So, this is what? This is your asymmetrical septal hypertrophy. What is this? Ventricular wall is so thick. So, this is thick ventricular wall. So, because of the asymmetrical septal hypertrophy and thick wall, if you closely look, your ventricle has become a banana. You have a classical diagnostic banana shaped ventricle in these patients of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So now I know the diagnosis and the most common and a very important mutation of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is Hanji, beta myosin heavy chain mutation. So this is answer is option C. So this is what beta, beta myosin heavy chain mutation. Apart from that, is there any other mutation? Hanji, is ke alawa bhi hoti hai. Myosin binding protein C mutation. So, two important mutation for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Myosin binding protein C and beta myosin heavy chain. But if I look at the rest of the option, Titan and Lemon AC, both are of dilated cardiomyopathy. Where you see a classical ninja star nuclei on histopathological examination. Hai na? Next, placoglobin. What about option B? Placoglobin mutation is seen where? In arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Where you see that your entire right ventricle muscle is replaced by adipose and fibrocollagenous tissue. There is a very important syndrome which is associated with ARVCM. Again, a very important PYQ, Naxos syndrome. ठीक है? चलो. ये भी हो गया. आगे चलते हैं. Next question. अरे वाह. Straightforward question. वही question. आता है तो बहुत अच्छा है. नहीं आता है तो बर्बाद करके जाता है. लेकिन हम बर्बाद नहीं होंगे क्यों? क्योंकि हम कवर कर लेंगे. हम सारे के सारे important questions कवर करके जाएंगे. 360 degree coverage, no loophole. Question is marker for rhabdomyosarcoma. BFX. जब लिखवाया था, पढ़ाया था, तो वहाँ पे सारे important markers की list आपको दी थी. और मैंने तब बहुत detail में और ध्यान से बार-बार बोला था कि these markers are very important. So marker for rhabdomyosarcoma, Hanji. This is B. Desmin. Answer is B. Desmin. But if I look at the rest of the option, Vimentin is the marker for sarcoma. Vimentin for sarcoma. Cytokeratin for Hanji. Carcinoma. HMB45 for melanoma. Okay, important. Chalo. Moving ahead to the next question. Okay. 
क्वेश्चन से इज दैट आई हैव अ फोर्टी ईयर ओल्ड मेल प्रेजेंटेड विद थाइरॉयड स्वेलिंग एंड डिसफेजिया मतलब आई एम डीलिंग विद थाइरॉयड कैंसर नाउ बायोप्सी ऑफ द लिजन इज शोन वॉट इज योर डायग्नोसिस फोटो है इमेज है और इमेज में देखते ही मुझे क्या दिख रहा है दैट आई हैव सम पिंक पिंक मटीरियल आई हैव सम एक्स्ट्रा सेलर पिंक पिंक मटीरियल डिपोजिशन वॉट इज दिस पिंक पिंक मटीरियल हाँ जी दिस पिंक पिंक मटीरियल इज येस दिस इज अमाइलॉयड डिपोजिशन दिस पिंक इज अमाइलॉयड डिपोजिशन एंड वी नो दैट देर इज वन थायरॉयड कैंसर वेयर यू सीम अमाइलॉयड डिपोजिशन येस द करेक्ट आंसर इज वेरी गुड यू गाइज आर एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट दैट इज मेडुलरी कार्सिनोमा थायरॉयड नो मेडुलरी कार्सिनोमा थायरॉयड अराइज फ्रॉम विथ सेल्स पैरा फॉलिक्यूलर सी सेल्स सो मेडुलरी कार्सिनोमा थायरॉयड अराइज फ्रॉम दी पैरा फॉलिक्यूलर सी सेल्स एंड वट इज द नॉर्मल फंक्शन ऑफ सी सेल्स टू सिक्रीट कैल्सिटोनिन नो आई हैव अ ट्यूमर विच अराइज फ्रॉम सी सेल्स हु नॉर्मली सिक्रीट कैल्सिटोनिन दैट मीन्स इन मेडुलरी कार्सिनोमा थायरॉयड आई विल हैव लॉर्ड्स एंड लॉर्ड्स ऑफ कैल्सिटोनिन and this lots and lots of calcitonin gets deposited in the thyroid as the amyloid and this amyloid is called as acal so the nature of amyloid that you see in medullary thyroid carcinoma is acal where a stands for amyloid and cal stands for calcitonin now if i'm talking about the histopathological examination important things that i want to tell you for future mcqs for follicular carcinoma thyroid we know first age old question can you differentiate follicular adenoma and carcinoma on fnac no never you can never differentiate why because follicular carcinoma thyroid ke liye mujhe biopsy ki zarurat padti hai because on biopsy i can comment whether i can see capsular or vascular invasion if i see capsular or vascular invasion then i will say it is follicular carcinoma otherwise not and for papillary carcinoma sabko pata hai a very important pyq classical nuclear features number 1 you will have a cartoon ki aankh jaisa which cartoon orphan any i nuclei orphan any i nuclei iske alawa you are going to see nuclear pseudo inclusions iske alawa apart from that you are going to have nuclear grooving and very important you will have samoma bodies yes pratisha it is red gene mutation yes very good in medullary you are going to have red mutation theek hai chalo ji next let's talk about next question again a straight forward question question says that i have a 20 year old female i have a 20 year old female and she is diagnosed with granulosa cell tumor of the ovary which of the following biomarkers would be most useful for the follow up of the patient and this is classical answer granulosa cell tumor what is the marker that we use yes the correct answer is option d inhibin but if i look at the rest of the option ca199 is going to be a marker for pancreatic carcinoma neuron specific enolase nsc and nsc ke alawa aur kon kon se ho sakte hain nsc synaptophysin chromogranin all these are for what they are for neuroendocrine tumors these are the markers for neuroendocrine tumors what about ca125 please specifically i have included this option because ca125 is a marker for serous ovarian carcinoma theek hai serious ovarian carcinoma han ji bilkul sahi keh rahe hain absolutely you guys are right granulosa cell tumor of ovary mein which body you see han ji call exner body one more body for ovarian tumor yolk sac tumor endodermal sinus tumor which which body you see yes SD body Schiller duval in yolk sac and Collegner in granulosa cell tumor theek hai ji chalo moving to my next question question says 
ट्रू अबाउट हीलिंग आर ऑल एक्सेप्ट तो मुझसे क्वेश्चन क्या पूछ रहा है क्वेश्चन मुझसे फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट पूछ रहा है ट्रू अबाउट हीलिंग आर ऑल एक्सेप्ट नंबर वन मैक्सिमम नियो वैस्कुलराइजेशन इज सीन ऑन डे फाइव दिस इज एब्सोल्यूटली अ ट्रू स्टेटमेंट नेक्स्ट एपिथीलियल रीजनरेशन बिगिन ऑन डे फोर दिस इज रॉन्ग दिस इज रॉन्ग दिस इज माई आंसर बिकॉज एपिथीलियल रीजनरेशन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फोर टू फोर्टी एट आवर्स नेक्स्ट प्लेटलेट्स आर फर्स्ट सेल ऑफ वून हीलिंग बिल्कुल ट्रू है maximum fibrosis is by 3 weeks 21 days absolutely true so in this scenario my correct answer is going to be option b but for your future purposes i want all of you to remember these important landmarks epithelial regeneration starts within 24 to 48 hours and it gets completed by the fifth day so i will say thick epidermis will be seen on fifth day clot formation starts in less than 24 hours neutrophils they start appearing on day 1 now if somebody says early granulation tissue granulation tissue ka banna shuru hota hai third day pe but maximum granulation tissue is 5 days now look at the question option maximum neovascularization that is also 5 day why fifth day because what is the composition of granulation tissue neovascularization so if maximum granulation tissue is on fifth day so maximum neovascularization will also be on fifth day maximum fibrosis 3 weeks maximum strength 3 months and mujhse pucha jata hai ki jo maximum strength hai wo kitni hai maine bola 70 to 80% of the strength so ekdam se mujhse sawal pucha gaya ki when i will have this is to 70 to 80% when i will have 100% of the wound strength i said never never ever you can have 100% of the wound strength back theek hai so once a scar always a scar whether it's a physical one or an emotional one theek hai 100% wapas nahi ho pata hai chalo moving ahead to the next question question number 19 a 28 year old man goes to the doctor for an annual physical examination on rectal examination masses are palpated the patient is referred for a colonoscopy which reveals adenomatous polyps located diffusely throughout the colon okay when asked about the family history the patient states that his father passed away from the colon cancer a diagnosis of fap familial adenomatous polyposis was suspected and the patient asked how he got this which of the following is the inheritance pattern of this condition oh my god such a long stem question seedha seedha poocho na ki tum kya poochna cha rahe ho fap ka mode of inheritance and remember we all know that fap is han ji option number c autosomal dominant in inheritance and जो भी मुझसे पूछते हैं मैं उन्हें हमेशा बोलती हूँ दैट दीज आर दी न्यूमोनिक्स दैट आई हैव मेड एंड दीज आर द स्क्रीन शॉट्स ऑफ माय क्लास ओनली वेयर आई हैव गिवन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ए डी ए आर डिसऑर्डर्स सो दीज आर योर ए डी डिसऑर्डर्स एग्जाम्पल्स इंपॉर्टेंट वंस कंपाइल्ड एट वन प्लेस दीज आर योर ए आर डिसऑर्डर्स कंपाइल्ड एट वन प्लेस एंड दीज आर योर एक्स एल डी एंड एक्स एल आर डिसऑर्डर्स so these images they have been provided to you in the explanation of the daily mcq quiz theek hai which is open for all e medicos pe jayenge to wahan pe aapko ye mil jayengi sari ki sari images of my class screenshot theek hai chalo aage chalte hain next question question says a female software engineer presents to opd with the chief complaint of easy fatigue she gives history of sitting in front of the computer for 12 to 14 hours per day she takes just like us more junk food and no fruits and vegetables cvc findings are hemoglobin 9 g percentage and mcv 120 what is the most likely cause of anemia due to deficiency of pdf will be uploaded in the group need not to worry 
Now, if I look at the question here, MCV 120, so one thing is clear that the question is asking about a Anji macrocytic anemia. So, ye jante hi, do option cut ho gaye. Sidro, it is what? Microcytic, acute blood loss, normocytic, dono gaye. So, now I am confused between A and B because both B12 and folic acid lead to macrocytic anemia. But the question is giving me a classical hint. No fruits and veggies and fruits and green leafy vegetable, green leafy vegetable and fresh fruits, they are a common source of what? Yes, folic acid. So, this is a classical case of deficiency of folic acid. But if examiner wants me to ask question regarding B12 deficiency, what is the question? Mentioning question will say that the person is on a vegan diet. Okay. So, vegans more prone to B12 deficiency and no fruits, veggies more prone to folate deficiency. Shaloji. Next. Question number 21. The following is a picture of liver biopsy with hemochromatosis. Which stain is used below to demonstrate the finding? So, we all know that hemochromatosis is what? It is an iron overload state. So, basically the liver will be having iron accumulation. And for iron accumulation, we use a special stain which gives blue color to the iron so all that blue blue color that you are seeing it is because of that special state and the special stain that we use for iron is hanji that is yes option number b pearls prussian blue stain alcyon blue abhi apne dekha tha alcyon blue can be used to stain mucin goblet cell right von cosa and elizarin red s they are the stains for calcium chalo Easy question tha, straightforward, apne ko aata tha, very good. Now, next question. Question says that regarding gist, all are true except, so basically question wants to ask you, which is the false statement, hai na? So, first option is that gist, gist ka full form is gastrointestinal stromal tumor, hanji. So, gist is the most common mesenchymal tumor of abdomen. Is this a true statement or a false? Ah, absolutely, it's a true statement. It arises from the smooth muscles of stomach. No, 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 it is false. So, my answer is option B. Kyunki, it arises from where? It arises from the interstitial cells of Kahel. Kahel, Kajal, 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 jo man kare bulao. Interstitial cells of Kahel se originate karta hai, arise karta hai. If I look at the rest of the options, secret is the most common genetic abnormality. Absolutely true. Secret is most common. In rest of the cases, you can also have PDGFR, but secret is most common. Histology shows spindle-shaped cells. Absolutely true. Spindle-shaped cells with paranuclear vacuoles. Absolutely true. Agar koi pooche, important, important question regarding gist. One more important point that I need to mention. The most common IHC marker for gist is also secret. Another name for secret, it is also called as CD117. Now, what about the most specific IHC marker of gist? That is Dodge 1 or Dog 1. Jo bolna hai, bol sakte ho. Theek hai? Chalo. Next. Question number 23. Question may bhoat sare hint points hai and image is also very characteristic. A patient who worked in shipping industry presents with pruller plaques. Findings are shown in the following picture. Which of the following is? Yes, look at the word. Most specific complication of this condition. I always say shipping industry, ship manufacture ho ya ship wrecking yard ho, they are associated with which exposure? Yes asbestos exposure and the image that is in front of you these are what yes these are asbestos body brown colored beaded appearance body brown colored beaded appearance bodies which are called as asbestos body and the most specific complication that is associated with asbestos exposure is yes option number c mesothelioma this is the most specific one. Absolutely correct. Chalo. 
Next question. You have to match the following translocations. Very easy. Number one for Burkitt's lymphoma. Burkitt's ke liye ka, kya kya hongi? 2, 8. Yaan to 8, 14 to hai. But aur kya hoti hai? 2, 8, 8, 14 and 8, 22. These are three important translocations for Burkitt's. So A ka ho gaya 3. Aur isi baat pe B kata, C kata. So I have to see now A and D me se. Next, if I say follicular lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma is, yes, translocation 1418. Follicular lymphoma is translocation 1418. Next is mantle cell lymphoma. It is translocation 1140. So, yani ki C ka ho gaya mera 4. So, A3, B1, C4. And anaplastic large cell lymphoma is translocation 25. So, correct answer is what? Hanji, option number A is my correct answer. Okay. So, moving to the next question. Which of the following subtype will be classified as luminal B as per gene expression classification? So, if I talk about the molecular classification of the breast cancer, I have four types of breast cancer. One is your luminal A. Then is your luminal B. Third is your HER2 enriched type of breast cancer and last is your TNBC also sometimes option writes basal carcinoma. Basal is another name for TNBC. Okay, so luminal A hum kab bolenge? Luminal A means when I have ER, estrogen receptor positive, PR positive, HER2 negative and proliferation index KI67 less than 14%. Now, if I want to say luminal B, I have two scenarios where I can label a breast cancer as luminal B breast cancer. Number one, ER positive, PR positive, HER2 negative and proliferation index more than 14%. Or another scenario, ER positive, PR positive and HER2 positive. But if I talk about HER2 enriched, name itself is telling you HER2 enriched means this is ER negative, PR negative and only HER2 positive. TNBC, again the name itself is telling you it is ER negative, PR negative and HER2 negative. And remember TNBC has the worst prognosis. TNBC has the worst prognosis whereas luminal A has the best prognosis. Another important PYQ. So, looking at this, I have to follow this one, which is being fulfilled by my, yes, option number C. So, correct answer is option number C. Okay. Now, last question. Question number 26. A 31-year-old male smoker presents with gangrene of his extremities. Which one of the following histological findings from a biopsy of the blood vessel supplying this area would be most suggestive of Berger's disease? Berger's disease. What is the another name for Berger's disease? It is also called as tau. Tau means thromboangitis obliterans. This is another name for tau. And we all know that in tau, the basic etiology is smoking and there is going to be intermittent leg claudication and there is going to be gangrene foot, right? And what happens is if the name, look at the name, tau means thrombo, there is going to be thrombus formation, there is going to be itis, inflammatory cells collecting together leading to an abscess formation and all this obliterating the lumen of blood vessel, thromboangitis obliterans. And I always tell this in my lecture, the diagnostic or the pathognomic finding of Burgess disease is the presence of Hanji. Option D, thrombosis with microabscess formation. You can appreciate and this finding you can only appreciate on the microscopic examination. But if I look at the rest of the option, option A, अगर एग्जामिनर मुझसे ऑप्शन ए मार्क कराना चाहता तो ये किसकी क्लासिकल प्रेजेंटेशन है हां जी फ्रैगमेंटेशन माइक्रोस्कोपिक पॉलीएंजाइटिस व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज ल्यूकोसाइटोक्लास्टिक वैस्कुलाइटिस इफ आई सी ऑप्शन बी ग्रैनुलोमैटस इन्फ्लेमेशन विद इओसिनोफिलिया दिस इज अ क्लासिकल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ 
Chug straw syndrome. Next, granulomatous inflammation with giant cells. Hanji, this is what? If question mentions, now please remember this is very important TYQ as well. If question says this presentation with age being more than 50 years, giant cell arthritis. If age less than 50 years, yes, Taka Yasu arthritis. Very important. Age more than 50, giant cell. Age less than 50, Taka Yasu. So, yes, this was all regarding your today TND FMG Daskadam series. So, all these 26 questions were from the very high yielding topics. That's why I made them specifically and tried to cover all the other important MCQs that can be asked in the examination. So, please go through your questions keep solving gts go through your dfx multiple revisions are must and be focused be calm you have all the essential material with you you have everything all you just need to is be patient relax and prioritize your syllabus now okay so i really wish all the best to all my bachalog, I am really, really rooting for you all. You are going to be super rock stars in the examination, I am sure. Okay? So with this, I now take a moment for to wish all of you all the best. And now, good night, sleep tight, bye-bye, take care everyone.